Hello everyone and welcome to Toku Time. Today we're gonna to be talking about Hakuju Sentai Guy Ranger. Hakuju Sentai! Go Ranger! Alright, so firstly you'll notice the format is a little different for this video. That's because since this this one is available for purchase, I wanted to just talk about it a little bit, link to where you can buy it, and give my thoughts on the show as a whole without watching um, the movies, because that's really what you're able to buy, is the show without the movies by itself. Okay. Okay, so first, the plot of the show is very, very strange. It's the simple Monster of the Week formula, but there's, like, arcs that they go through. Usually, it's, it's only pivotal during specific portions, and it's hard to, like, distinguish sometimes. But if you're not, the show's okay. It's just boring. For example, when I was watching this show, I forgot where I was for when I was in the process of watching the show for this video. So I was confused as to what was happening and forgot where I was, so I started over, right? Not a terrible idea. Here's the thing. Everything that I forgot was because it was forgettable. There was not a whole lot going on, and that saddened me because in every other uh, show that is Super Sentai, it's kind of like that, but they at least have like an overarching thing a few episodes in. This one really didn't. Um, it had the villains, the main villains we'll get to in a minute, but they really weren't the best villains because they were kind of forgettable and mostly cheesy, but we'll get to that in due time. It was not the best thing in the world, but it was definitely something. Needs a good plot. That's that's what we have common for. First, let's talk about the team themselves. Um, they are... The best character in that entire team is Gal Yellow, because he's the funniest. Uh, which, you know, you know me, I was rooting for blue guys, blue-green, you know, you know how I do. But uh, this time, I was finding myself more entertained by the Yellow Ranger, because he knew when to be serious and when to be funny. When he was funny, he was hilarious. When he was dramatic, he was really dramatic. Now, it's not to say the entire team wasn't like that. I just think Gal Yellow did it the best. Um, and you know, it's not saying their actual names. Uh, they don't either until the very last episode of the show. Really. Um, they did. They do like once or twice for the other, for two of the team members, but not for the rest of them. For like two or three members. They don't go in depth about their past or anything much aside from like how they got there how they got chosen but that's it really they don't we know nothing of their lives we know nothing about their families or anything we just know hey they're chosen there's your team uh which is fine i guess i just kind of wanted a little more because um take uh tokuja for example uh because i'm taking some i've watched uh, on my channel for, before we're learning their backstory because they don't know it. We know their names, but that's it. We're learning at, We're learning more about them as the show goes on. And that is interesting to me. I like the mystery of it. But when they don't tell you their names for the fact that they're at war with the bad guys of the show, like, what? That's stupid. That's so stupid. Until the very last episode, they're like, nah, we're not, we're, we're not at war anymore, so let's say our names. Uh, to be fair, when they said their names, it was a pretty epic scene. Um, it's pretty cool. I was like, all right, all right, that's, the, all right, you got me there. You got me there. Um, but that is, like, a little different than what I was expecting to get from the show. Uh, but let's talk about each team member by themselves. They're, we're going to talk about the main five, and then we'll talk about the six by themselves, because this is a six ranger for the season, much like most Super Sentai seasons at this point in time. Uh, let's talk about Red. Um, Gal Red, he is really, he's a good leader. And he cares about animals and the environment. Because that's what the show is about. It's about animals and taking care of the environment. Because if you don't, the bad guys will come and, you know, that won't be good. But if you're pure of heart and you take care of the environment, then you could be chosen for when the orgs come back again. Because we never know when that could happen. It could happen tomorrow, it could happen next month, it could happen 10 years from now. It could happen. 
And so to prevent that, you got to take care of the environment so that what people know that what you're doing is something that you're doing. Uh, red embodies this pretty much because like that's what that's what the leader does for this uh, season. Like that's just all he does. He's like oh, let's defend the animals and defend the environment, which is fine. That's what it's supposed to be. But other than that, he's not really super interesting. Other than the fact that he's a vet. That's it. Next, we're going to talk about the White Ranger, Gal White. That's who we're talking about first. Um, she is the only female on the team, which is fine, but she's a child. She's a literal. There was literally five minutes of an episode was dedicated to her throwing a hissy fit because everyone was teasing her. I'm like, no, that's not what a girl Sentai team member is about. A girl Sentai team member is caring and badass at the same time. For example, Tokujer, uh, yellow in that was is a female, and she's badass. She has a hammer, and she's just like, she's she still cares about people, and she cares about what happens to them, especially her team. Toki Pink, she's kind of a baby, but she's a, she, she she gets a pass because she's adorable and she is the way she is, and she still gives a shit, and she's still badass too, so it's it's fine. This is like when you have a child write a superhero and they've never seen a superhero before, and they know the girl stereotypes. That's what she's like, and that is sad to me. Because she's so much more than that. So bad, <laughs> dude. It's so bad. Anyway. I, remember, this is my opinion. Uh, I want you guys to form your own opinions, and tell me in the comments. Anyway, the next person we're going to be talking about is Gao Yellow, because he's the one I remember the most. He is so goddamn fun. He's more the comedic relief of the team, which is fine. I applaud it because the show is more funny than anything else. It was like, it's like Car Ranger, pretty much, if you've seen that. It, that was mostly episodic and filler as well, um, with a more em emphasis on comedy than it was anything else, because it was a parody season, technically, but I, I don't want to get into that, because that's not my place. Anyway. Uh, Gao Yellow was really funny. He used to be a fighter pilot. He, and that's it. That's all we know about him, really. He was a fire part, fighter pilot. He gives a shit about people. And he is one of the better team members, I think, because he does the most. Yep. Next is Gao Blue, the shark one. He's fun. He's the youngest of the group, pretty much. So he's treated like a child, and yet he acts more adult than the one who acts like a child the most, which is surprising to me. And he has a best friend relationship with uh, the Black Ranger, which is awesome. I really like that, that they had like a, a big brother, little brother uh, dynamic going on there throughout the show. That was interesting. I was like, oh man, are they going to stay after this is all over? Are they going to stay friends throughout, together? And, and they were like, yeah, what is going to happen in one of the episodes? And they were like, man, I really liked I really want to start a business with you so they plan to do that and they're, they're, work, they're both working hard at it so they can start a business together and that's awesome Gal Black uh, he's the muscle pretty much he's a bit dumber but he's not dumb at the same time he's pretty smart but like he's written like he's a dumb person or like he's just all brawn no brain but he's more brain than brawn which I find interesting as well like, like, it's really interesting. So if you watch the show, don't watch the show for the plot. No, no, no. Watch the show for the characters and see how they develop. Because that is the best part of the show, is how those characters change and how they react to the situations. Now, most of the times when it is filler, it's like, okay, yeah, let's, let's move along. Episode, come on. Let's, let's get this going. Let's move on to when they're cool again. And that's really it. Um, yeah, that's really all I can say about Black... And Silver, the sixth ranger, he's our next one. He is interesting because he is from the past. Uh, without going into plot details, that's all you know. Uh, he lets the wind guide him. That's it. He plays the flute. flute. Yeah, not much else. Um, he doesn't really bring a whole lot, mainly because he's not even with the team half the damn time. He's like playing pool somewhere. That is no joke. He lives in a billiard room. Silver was a weird inclusion, but they needed a sixth team member, I guess. I don't know, but it was a weird inclusion at best, and I don't think he was really all that required because 
you don't really use him. But I will say the way, his, the way he was brought into the show, that was awesome. That was really cool. That was my favorite arc of the entire show. Yeah, that's cool. That, I will not spoil it at all. Like, go go watch the show and form your opinion and let me know how badass you think it is, because it is. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is the power animals. They are the Zords, basically, of the show. There's a bunch of different ones. There's so many to name. Uh, there's Lion, Bison, Tiger, Shark, Eagle, Falcon. Falcon and Eagle, kind of the same thing, but whatever. Uh... Wolf, elephant, alligator. There's so many. There's so many. Um, they're cool. That's it. They're cool. The they talk to the rangers, or the yeah, Gow rangers. They're so they're pretty cool. That's really all I can say about that. Um, they are really interesting because they all worship this like god, the Gow god. Is his name? Uh, he doesn't show up often. And he wasn't even very integral to the plot, otherwise to show, like, hey, I'm cool, and then he left. That's it. That's all he did. He's always like, ah, I'm here. I'm, I'm mad at you. Bye. And that was it. And which saddens me. I wanted more of him. Because he was cool. He was cool, and it made me upset. It made me upset to see him like that. Like a god reduced to, hi, bye. That was it. Uh... But although the way he went out was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, and yeah. So the next thing I want to talk about is the villains of the show. Uh, I'm not going to, again, I'm not spoiling it. I'm just going to talk about it and let you guys form your own opinions. I'm giving mine and that's it. So the villains for this season are called the Orcs. They come from inanimate objects and they are pointless. Except the Dukes and the One Horn. That's it. So in total, three are important at a time, which is fine, but they don't do anything. One actually did something in the first arc, or in the first like act of the show, so say it's split up to three acts. One was obsessed with Vox, pretty much, and wanted pretty things. One was hungry, wanted to eat things. And then the two supporting dukes, I say supporting in air quotes because like, they didn't do anything either. They made the orcs big. That was all they did. That's all they brought. And they catered to the duke. Duke's uh, whims, and that that's really all I can say about them. The white one was cool. When you watch, if you watch the show, you'll know who I was talking about, and he is funny and stupid, and I love him. Uh, there is one big final org, but I'm not gonna talk about that because that is spoiler. He's badass and cool, and that's sad that I was looking at the end of the movie and the show. I almost said movie because I was thinking about the movie movies that I watched, which I I will get into with a little bonus at the end. You know how it goes. Anyway, so that's, yeah, so that's what I wanted to talk about with the villains, that they're cool, mostly. Um, I like that they come from me and I'm an object, it's like, okay, what's this? And it's like, oh, it's barbed wire, or, oh, it's a cell phone, oh, it's a traffic light, like, that's cool, that's interesting, that orgs can just come to life, that's, that's cool. So the next thing I want to talk about was the Power Rangers season for this show. Uh, Power Rangers Wild Force. Wild Force does everything that Gal Ranger was doing, but better. So, for example, Red was much more of an inexperienced leader in Wild Force, and he grew into a better leader as time went on, and he grew closer with his team. Now, Gal Red did that too, but I didn't really care, because like I knew that they would get along. Like That's the whole thing. But... In Wild Force, I didn't know that if they would get along or not because he's he was literally raised in the jungle. Like that's cool. He has a deep connection to the animals because he lived with animals. That's cool. Like Wild Force is really good. It's a lot better in my opinion than Gun Ranger is um, because it'll hit harder with the drama. Which I go to Super Sentai for. I go to the drama of the characters and their backstories and their and their arts. Like I care about these characters and I want to care about these characters. But for these characters, I really didn't care about it because like, why are they fight? Like they want they want to protect the Earth. Okay, that's it. But in Wild Forest, like there's this whole thing with the Red Ranger and learning about his family because he doesn't know his family. He just knows that he has a jewel thing and that's it. He just goes off. That's cool. He's has 
he has a reason to fight them and learn about them. And he wants to call out to them and try and peace with them because he doesn't want to fight. Red was, uh, Guy Red was kind of like that too, but the uh, Red Ranger from Wild Force was was more interesting the way he did that stuff. So that's interesting. I like that. They used a lot of the same stuff. The ending was the exact same in the two, which, yeah, no doubt, but I feel like the ending of um, Wild Force was impactful just as well because of all the twists and turns of the show. And speaking of that, let's talk about the crossovers of uh, Gower Ranger. There was one. There was one movie. It was a clip show. It's It was a cool clip show, but it was a clip show that really didn't do much to express that they were fighting anything. They, they were just learning about the Super Sentai history, which is fine. I wanted to learn about the history, too. But I also wanted to see, like, teams. Like, I wanted to see more than one per team show up and then, like, be cool. That's it. That's all I wanted. And even then, that didn't really happen. <laughs> oh, like, it was very disappointing to see that the other teams, they showed up a little bit, but only a few of them. And it was the, the actors that came back were cool and all, but, like, I wanted to see their entire team, not just the single actors. Except for Go Yellow. He is my favorite of that special. He is awesome, and I love him. But here are my final thoughts. My final thoughts on this entire season. It's good. It's good. It could be better, but for 2001, it's pretty, it's, it is pretty all right. Um, I wish they did more with the characters and gave us their names more than once or twice throughout the series. And I wish um, it wasn't so episodic at times and like more filler for more than 20 episodes, I would say. Out of 50, yeah. It was, it was a lot of filler that I felt like was filler because not a lot was explored. Besides, like, that stuff. The, the, I, I classify it as blocks, right? So there's a story block, a filler block, story block. There was a bigger filler blocks than story blocks, really. The stories, the, the story important episodes only lasted about four episodes per important thing at a time. And then it was, like, huge filler as they, like, developed, kind of. But it was like more Monster of the Week and that's it. Which is fine. I just wish that they did more story stuff with it like they do in Power Rangers. And I wish they did a crossover with Time Ranger. That would have been cool. I wish they did that. But they didn't. They didn't. And it makes me upset a little bit. But that's fine. Overall, the show's pretty good. I suggest you watch it if you want to. There's a link in the description of where you can watch it where you can buy the DVD and if you catch it at the right time you can watch it on Pluto TV on Tokusau Shoutsu which I highly recommend doing because that is fun and it's supporting uh, Toku in the West which is what we need we need more Tokusatsu in the West guys so and we need more people spreading love about it especially during this time and the best time to watch it is when you're cooped up at home all the damn time that's what I do that's what I'm doing I'm watching Hurricanes right now. I'm not far in it, but it's my favorite Power Ranger season, and so far it's one, turning into one of my favorite Sentai seasons. It's, for, it's like, like I'm interested in these characters already. Like, I want to be interested in these characters. I want to. If the characters aren't interesting, I'm not gonna enjoy it. When one character is interesting, I'm like, okay, what's his next antic? And that's about it. But I'll at least give the show a fair shot, and I try. Anyway, so that's my whole thoughts on that. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what shows you guys have been watching and what shows you'd recommend for me to watch and all. If I watch it, I'll make a video on it. Yeah. And that's going to be about it for that. You can hit me up on Twitter at Tokunoot. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch, also at twitch.tv slash Tokunoot. I stream sometimes, but not often right now. I don't really have a schedule set up. I just kind of do it when I feel like doing it. Uh, I'm currently playing through Color Splash, though. That's fun. Anyway, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. 